Hello, good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm really good. That's great. I'm so happy to hear you're really good. <laughs> That's not always the response from either of us, not just, but you know, but hearing really good is great. I think it's the sun. The sun is shining and it's got me and I've been like, like awake, awake for a while. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I hear it, the weather is supposed to be nice this weekend and next week. Like it's supposed to be mild, like in the seventies this weekend, which is really perfect. Exciting. Yes. yes. Thinking, like, well, what am I going to do to take advantage of this? Cause like it's been pretty hot and humid. So yeah. Um, I do have something new to share. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, um, Carrie. I got this new mug for my birthday that has like card catalog drawers on it. That is adorable. I oh. love that. Yeah. So this is the mug I'm drinking out of. May or may not be drinking. Um, I totally lost what it was called. S'mores hot chocolate. Ooh. I like it's very it. very good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been reading anything lately? Um, I finished um Hold on. I need to I need to lick the spoon so it doesn't drip all over my um okay. table. Sorry everybody. You do that. Okay. okay. I finished Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Mm -hmm. It was really good. And at one point mm -hmm. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Um, and it has a twist and a twist ending that I thought was like, that was clever. I liked that. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so glad to hear that. And actually that reminds me of something you mm -hmm. can, I'll let you finish in a minute. Um, but that reminds me that I saw the HBO is going to be doing some interpretation of final girls, the one by Riley Sager, not final Ooh. girls. And that Charlize Theron is attached. And Ooh. unless it, maybe it was final girls support group. I don't remember. I wrote down Final There's so Girl, many, which is yeah. Riley Sager. But was I just making an abbreviated note? Is Mary here today? Can she fact check me? I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, two books is uh, been optioned by HBO. Charlize Theron. In either case, I, she's attached to it, but I don't know that she was actually acting in it. I feel like she was directing or producing or something. Okay. Um, but in either case, if she were to be Final Girl support group, that characters are older, they're in their mm -hmm. 30s, 40s, yeah. up to 50. So I feel like Charlize Theron could be any one of those. Like she mm -hmm. could actually be that, and I think she'd be perfect. I'm not sure about the Riley Sager story, but in either case, yeah. there's a tidbit of information, you guys, not enough Ooh. to go on. And yeah. uh, <laughs> we don't know the whole story. Yeah, just a little <laughs> puzzle for you guys to figure out on your own. <laughs> but I also wanted to share that I have started yeah. this book by Sam Keen. It's a nonfiction. I don't read a whole lot of nonfiction, but yeah. I do read Sam Keen. He does like science in a really interesting way. And mm -hmm. like his his books fascinate me. This one is The Ice Pick Surgeon, Murder, Fraud, Sabotage, Piracy, and Other Dastardly Deeds Perfected in the Name of Science. So it's That's about- great. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. So- Charlie Theron is adapting Final Girl. Final Girl support, support group. group. Okay. okay. Good morning, Andrea. Thank you, Carrie, for the information. Thank you, Carrie, so much. And that is what I, because as it was coming out, I was like, wait a second. But I think I was excited because I thought she actually also might be in it because she could very well be the appropriate age. Yes. Also, this was a note I made for myself for last week's show and didn't get to. And I transferred it over to this week's show and the notebook I'm using. So it's just part of my new method and I need to be a little bit better. Also, I wrote Final Grill. I should also. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I'm just not there yet. <laughs> I was making notes this morning, and as I was writing the word, I'm like, "That is not how you spell that." But it was just like it was too late. My hand was already Your making the motion. Again. I know. Anyway, and I'm yeah. sorry. I interrupted you like 400 times now about <laughs> this, and I don't even thank you, Carrie. Good morning, Andrea. Let's continue. Okay, but yes, I wanted to say that he presents these story. They're fascinating like he he did this one on chemistry i'm like who mm -hmm. who can make chemistry interesting right. he, did. It, he did um but this one is about like 
all of the crimes and ethical boundaries people crossed in the name of science and how like yeah. they convince themselves that it's okay it's for the greater good but it's yeah. like mm, is it though <laughs> and like um you know this awful thing was done by the nazis but it's the only information we have so can right. we use it is it yeah. Yeah. so yeah yeah it's like well what honors the person more right I, yeah. I, yeah so it it presents really interesting ethical questions so yeah. but yes it he does, does science in a way that is very accessible like you don't have to be a science person to get it yeah and it's just really interesting and it that's great like, yeah i highly recommend sam keen if you're i wrote into him that. um do you are you listening to that or reading him listening Okay, so is the narrator good too? Is it yeah, the narrator's great? good. I don't know who the narrator is though. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure. Sometimes in those books too, the narrator can really make a difference because it can be boring if it's yeah. read in like a newscastery way or a, a <laughs> you know. When you're talking about pirates, I don't think there's a way to make that boring. Okay, well, <laughs> I didn't know there were pirates in my defense. Yeah. It starts off with pirates. Yeah. <laughs> because what else goes with science than pirates? Right. Well, that sounds really fun. I'm glad that you're reading that. I do remember seeing that when it was coming out. Um, yeah. Well, give us an update next time about like the yeah. most audacious thing from it or something. <laughs> um, I am reading, I just finished and really, really enjoyed um, an advanced copy of Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr, who wrote um, All the Light We Cannot See, which what I did not title read. again? A Cloud Cuckoo Land. It comes out at the end of September, September 28th, um, and I loved it. I did not read All the Light We Cannot See, um, so I, but I imagine he has sort of a similar style. Um, this book it has about five main characters and it takes place from there. They live in different times. So some of the characters are from the 1450s and the fall of Constantinople. Some of the characters are in mid century Idaho. Some of the characters are in like early 2000s up to present day Idaho. And then one of the characters is in question mark future on a spaceship. And, um, well, Cuckoo Land refers to a play, an old Greek play. The play is, well, Cuckoo Land is a true reference um, from an era, a play by Aristophanes, I believe. Um, but the actual play Anthony, uh, called Cloud Cuckoo Land, Anthony Doerr made up. He said it was like a fragment written by a true Greek playwright, but he's made up this structure of a play. And so that play goes throughout. So you read pieces folios from the play and that story goes throughout the whole the whole arc of all these people and um it's just i just i really loved it i love i love books that have these shifting uh timelines and characters mm -hmm. and it was a book about um really just what it means to be a steward of stories all these people were in one way or another the steward of this particular ancient story and then also what it means to be like the steward of like our planet and our future and um it was really really good so that comes out end of september i highly recommend it um especially if you read all the light we cannot see you already know if you like him or not but um that story itself was really appealing to me so i was very excited it's also over 600 pages long so prepare okay. <laughs> be prepared and I apologize for my dog barking in the background. Yeah. Someone had the audacity to knock at the front door during lattes. Right. Well, how dare they? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. So yeah. he's trapped in my room so he can't get there. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully the person will not continue to knock and the bark. They're, I saw them leave, so it's it's okay. <laughs> well, good. As they should have. Hi. Also, apologies for me wiping my eyes and nose, I'm not crying. I'm just, it's allergies. <laughs> um, so something about... <laughs> Hi. Sorry. The guy's Hi. gone and he keeps... You want to go kick him out? <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll let Leah go do that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the guy is gone and he's like, rawr, 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 as soon as I open my door. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, he's just got to make sure he's gone. He has to go see right. for himself. That's ferocious. Nobody that's out ferocious. there. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, did you have anything else? Any other news or updates? Um, news or updates? I got more fabulous and more wonderful. But other than that, no. Day by day, you know, every day is just a little more than the last. Right? Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> um, we decided we wanted to talk about series books today. Yeah. Um, did you, like, what prompted, because that was your idea. So what prompted that idea for you? that you didn't have a lot of time this morning and you read a lot of series. And so I thought it would be easiest for you to prep that. Honestly, okay. that is what prompted <laughs> that for me. Um, also another, but because, you know, I'm always looking for, for the, uh, the segue. Um, I'm not a series reader. I explicitly do not read series. My exception is my shirt, Harry Potter. I was a child when this came out. It imprinted on me. I can't help it. Um, but beyond that, I explicitly, specifically almost never read series. I just, something about it isn't appealing to me. And so based on our conversation last week, I was thinking about it and probably part of it has to do with what type of reader I am. I read for language, I read for words, I read for kind of an atmosphere, but not a world building. And so um, I read by the same, I follow authors and following an author, um, <laughs> I get the, that sense that I think other people get from series. I read the same author and I'm still getting, I'm getting their language. I read, you know, everything a certain person puts out. You know, I read Elizabeth Strout. They're not series really. Um, or, you know, James McBride or you, whoever. And I, I read their stuff, but they're not, because I'm still getting, getting their style. And that's what I'm after. And I've never felt, um, I've never felt that feeling that I've heard you describe and other people describe where you're like, oh, I just was so sad to leave, leave these characters behind. That's not a relationship I feel when I read a book. I don't feel connected in that way. You so, don't fall in love with characters? No. Like the story, and I appreciate them in their story, but I don't feel like I'm sorry to leave them behind or anything. And so I think that that's part of why I'm not a series reader as well. Yeah because I don't need to follow those characters. Like, that's not what I'm in it for. So yeah. it's just, we're very different readers in that way. And so I knew it was something that you really like and would yeah. be passionate to talk about. Mary pointed out, I do read comic book series and I have in my notes, um, some <laughs> of that. And that's because comics, they could all be one book. Like they're, you know, especially because the ones I read, they have like four or five, volumes and then they're done and so that really could all be one book it's not it's it's they, they always end and they're always one story and whatever it andrea says that she uh the light bringer stories is her one of her favorites and mm -hmm. it was absolutely the case when she was done with it she felt like lonely for the characters and that happens to me like i miss them when, when the book is done yeah. and i want to know yeah. i want to know more i think that's yeah I, I i get very wrapped up and emotionally involved in the story which i think mm -hmm. is why i love series because the story is able to continue yeah um, a lot of the series that i well i read we read lots of different series. Yeah. Now that you say that, I, I really do. I didn't realize it. Um, you know, they're like, like the Clan of the Cave Bear series. You just follow this woman throughout her life from the time she's like a ch very small child. So yeah. like, you're very emotionally invested in what happens to her because. Yeah. And, and, and that makes me think of something which a series that I have read, I listened to it and I'm not done with it, um, but is Anne of Green Gables, but I don't feel any attachment to Anne. It's the atmosphere, it's the imagery, yeah. it's the softness of mm -hmm. her life. Yeah. I don't ever miss Anne. It's just, oh, you know what? I think I could use that softness right now. And so then I play that, but I, and I miss like when a book's over, I miss the experience of reading it. Like I miss mm -hmm. sitting in my chair over there. I miss having it in my hands and I miss delving into that feeling, but mm -hmm. I don't, the characters, 
you're not real, which I know you know. But <laughs> so I just I'm able to release them. They're just yeah. there as a function of in that writing, I guess. Anyway, I'm sorry, but just when you were saying that and you were saying about how you follow her, I was thinking, well, yeah, I do follow Anne, but I don't ever think about Anne <laughs> when I'm not reading. <laughs> I had to come back in because you know yes i could be back here but yes. um, i need to shut the door other noise <laughs> but yeah i i like following series i um yeah it's just and it's it's different because i feel differently about different series um mary says that's very true about comics and they often do end up bound as a single hardcover volume mm -hmm. so it is like they're Lots short little stories. That's one big story. So she's right. I do read Man Eater, um, and there's a couple others, Ice Cream Man. But there's not gonna be anyway. They're not. It's not The Walking Dead, which is a continuing <laughs> story of survival horror. Very continuing. Um, Mary says that she's the same way with characters to the point where she stopped reading The Expanse because she heard something about um, the main gang, and if she stopped reading now. She didn't have to get there and that <laughs> didn't happen. Oh. So that's, I yeah. totally get that. Like yeah. sometimes when I'm reading a book, it's like, I want to read it really fast because I want to know what happens, but I want to read it really slow because I don't want to get to the end. Yeah. And I don't want to leave that world yeah. or that character. It's, um, yeah. it, it's, I don't know. Like yeah. the Outlander series. That, that is one of those series where like, you follow these characters and you know you end up in all of these far flung far flung places that you don't even expect and it's just like it, but just watching all of that it, it's fascinating yeah. to me and it's well, like that that how life this would have been you know if this yeah. were real the <laughs> outlander series reminded me i was going to ask just something questions about series um are so that Lander series isn't over, but it's something you currently read. Do you, do you, does it matter if it, if a series has ended or not? Number nine is coming out in November. It's not I know, over. That's what I said. I said. It's not over yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So do you, are you current, are you comfortable reading? It sounds like you are comfortable reading a series that hasn't ended because I know people who specifically will not begin a series until it's over because they just don't want to have to deal with the waiting or the forgetting of what happened before. For me, Outlander is an exception. It's one of those mm -hmm. ones that um, I am okay with that one. Yeah. I think because I've spent so much time with those characters that I feel like I know them, um, mm -hmm. that I could pick up book nine and just read it because I yeah. know the characters well enough. And it would probably take me a few minutes to be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's where we are in the story. Like I know mm -hmm. how it, I know how the other book ended, but um, yeah, it'd probably only take me a few seconds to like get into the group mm -hmm. again. There might be little bits here and there that I would have mm -hmm. forgotten, um, yeah. because those stories are dense and a lot happens right. in them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But other series, no, I wait until they're all out before mm -hmm. I read them, um, okay. because I, I do. If too much time goes by, I forget. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Bad. I don't. I don't want to forget. So I will right. most often wait until a series is published. Um, yeah. Don't always. There are a few, like some of the romance series I read. Mm -hmm. I won't always wait until they're all out because mm -hmm. what happens with those is with romance series. Those are different. You mm -hmm. get like one couple story, and you get your happy mm -hmm. ending, mm -hmm. and you get introduced. To a, another character, and a like sister, a friend. A best friend. <laughs> yes, um, and and the next book mm -hmm. is that character's love story. Yeah, and that comes to a happy ending. Right. But some, at some point in that story, you're introduced to a friend. Mm -hmm. Now, I like it when there's like a big friend group, so you know that mm -hmm. there's going to be lots of stories. Um, mm -hmm. But for those, I I don't have to wait until all of the books are out because yeah. even though they take place in the same with the same group of people. They yeah. are. They're standalones. They're standalones. They can yeah. be read um, without having read the others. Mm -hmm. It's just nice to get like 
to, to really know the characters yeah. that are in that friend group. It's yeah. like the Babysitter's Club. Each one of those mm -hmm. could be read by itself. Yes. But it was a series. And yeah. like each book, it's on its own, was a yeah. complete story. So, yes. And it's interesting to me the way that some series, you cannot read that way. Mm -hmm. Really, to understand it, you have to go start from the beginning and go forward. Yeah. And other others are complete standalones. Mm -hmm. And yet still, there are... And most of your romances are like that. Mm -hmm. There, and a lot of your mysteries, cozy <clears throat> mysteries, cozy mysteries especially, you can yeah. kind of dabble because the mystery is solved at the end of yes. the book. And so yeah. the only thing that may be different is like you read book seven and you're like, oh, this person's mayor because in book three, the current mayor turns out was the murderer and they had to oust him or whatever. But yeah. it's just going to be stuff like that. But it's not going to be. Super. There are some mysteries, though, where you get, like, a lot of character growth with the main character. Mm -hmm. So skipping books in there, you yeah. miss a little bit of the story, yeah. um, which makes those a little bit harder. But you, the mystery itself is solved. Yeah. I think you just get a more full understanding of the story yeah. when, you're, when they're read in order because... Right. You get the backstory. Yes. Yeah. 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 But it's not necessary. Yeah. Like it's 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 like there are <laughs> a couple yeah. different variations in there. Yeah. And then and you have like um other series where the characters aren't the same at all, mm -hmm. but it's like like so Hannah French's murder mystery, double Ed murder squad. Well, with the murder squad, you do know the other characters in the in, in the yeah, in the, but they're not, but, the, you, it's but it's not tied together, right? yeah, yeah. But in some series that I've read, there's some kind of common theme that like ties all the stories together, even though um, the stories themselves are completely different, no common characters. Um, like there was this one series I was reading, it was a series of romances, and each romance took place in a different state. And was written by an author who lived in that state. So, like, they were able to add local flavor to the yeah. love story, but it was a love story. But it was a series about falling in love in the United States. Yeah. So, yeah. so more like or a sometimes like that was created that like because some of those that kind of reminds me of the books that are more just like a universe. They're not yeah. like a series. They're yes. like a universe, like the Colton universe, mm -hmm. where it's just the Coltons in the romance land exist and it's a universe on and unto its own or the star wars universe there's a bunch of star wars books um we get we get this a lot in kids books um things that are written by a lot of different authors and they're just they're the american girl books they, they're all these american girl characters but they're not one tied together thing but they do all exist under this umbrella yeah um andrea made the comment that it's a richer experience and i think that was going back to like reading them in order even to get the backstory even yeah. though they can be yeah things can be read separately yeah. it's um one thing that i have noticed there for a while trilogies were like a really big thing you yeah know, especially yeah. in teen teen books you you get the trilogy mm -hmm. there, were, there were you know something happened there was some big problem to solve and it mm -hmm. the story followed like that character as they work yeah. through the problem, like Hunger Games and mm -hmm. um, oh, just a dozen different yeah teen series. I've started noticing a lot more duologies mm -hmm. in teen books where it's just two two books. Like mm -hmm. they, they they solve it in two. I'm like, yeah. I wonder if that's just like a publishing trend because yeah. like it seemed like trilogies were the big thing for mm -hmm. a long time, and but now it seems to be like. Two books. Have you noticed that? No, I have not. I've not. The only two book series, but again, I don't read. I don't read teen books, mm -hmm. and I don't read fantasy, and I don't read the things that are typically series. And those, those are fantasy series is. There's plenty of standalone fantasy book, but teen fantasy series is definitely a thing, and it's a thing yeah. I'm not very familiar with. But I actually half my pages of half my page of notes is about trilogies, <laughs> um, and about why they're so appealing. Um, because they follow that three act structure and, um, also going back to cloud cuckoo land because they, um, you know, way back in the day, uh, the Greek perform like 
Greek plays were typically in these three, they would have three plays. That's how like the, you know, it was the diet, whatever it was, um, you had to make three plays to get this award. Yeah. And so it all goes back. And then of course our mentally, the rule of three makes sense to us um, and across the board. Um, and so it seems like we feel like memorable and effective, like three is a memorable and effective number. So I have not noticed duologies at all, um, but I don't, you know, but I don't it's think because you know, Trans well, I, say, I don't think that the trilogy is going anywhere though. Like maybe duologies are coming up, but I doubt that the trilogy will actually go anywhere. Right. But I think it's a trend that we will see more of. Yeah. Because things start with teen books and then you mm -hmm. see them in adult books later. So yeah. yes, but duologies yeah. are a thing and Mary's backing me up. She says yeah. that Mary Lou has her second book of her current duology is about to come out. Um, Mary's, uh, Carrie says that The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is her favorite trilogy. And Mary says, trilogy, lol, definitely my favorite literary joke or one of them. You're gonna have to explain the joke, Mary. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get the joke. <laughs> but I was pulling um, book bundles for people. Yeah. I was like seeing what people liked. And yeah. I'm one of those people, when I pull a book bundle, I don't like to pull the next book in a series because what if they didn't like the first one? They don't want that in the second one. So I will put, like, write a note. Like, if you mm -hmm. like this title, here's the next book in the in the trilogy. Yeah. Or the next book. And a lot of the, I was like, duology. Like, I've never even seen that word before. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it makes sense. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but, like, three of the books that I picked out were duologies. I'm like, oh, this is a thing now. So Yeah. Yeah, the only duology I've ever read is The Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. And I read those in January and I talked about them a lot on the show, so I won't go into it again. But um, it is a fantasy and it is YA and it's something I would never, ever, 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 ever read on my own. But I read it for a book club and I really did enjoy it. But that was only two books as well. So, so they're joking about Douglas Adams and how it wasn't actually a trilogy. Even though it's called a trilogy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also like, there's books that I, when I was reading about trilogies, um, there's books in series that really are just one story cut up into parts that don't mm -hmm. necessarily exist as one book. Um, and then, or, you know, that, that aren't really, don't really make up a, a great book on their own. Um, and then there's books that really do end. And yes, you can tell there's more coming, but they also end. Um, and so I feel like some of those trilogies are things that could have just been like, 2,500 pages long, and they just had to divide them at different portions be so that you know a 2,500 page book um, versus something that really was crafted as one story that ends. And so I do read books that are parts of series. I just don't continue because I don't, I'm not in, I like, for example, The Magician. Yeah. I loved The Magicians, the first book. The yeah. first book comes to an end. There's clearly going to be a second book. It ends in a way that clearly pushes you that direction, but I'm just not interested. I really liked the first one. And I'm sure that the others are good, but I didn't, I just want the story to end there. I liked how the story, I just, I don't know. I just, so I do read, I do read books that, and especially in the ones where you can kind of dabble in and out. I'm very easy. My aunt bought a book recently when she was visiting um, last month about, she bought a book that was part, she said, I just, I just did it. She said, it's part two in a series, it's book two in a series. I've never read book one. They didn't have book one. We were to use bookstore. And she's like, and I just, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to read the second book. I'm going to see if I like it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes, like, series can get long. Like, you know, a lot of times, like, a series, you know, it's really interesting and you like the characters, but it's yeah. just like, it's not that different, you know? Yeah. And, or maybe, like, the author uses the same phrase and, like, yeah. If you use it once in a book, that's okay. But if you read three books yeah. in a row and they use that book, that phrase every time, it's just like, really? Yeah. Um, and maybe that's my fault because I read things back to back. Whereas they're written like yeah. a year apart. So yeah. that's part of it, partially my fault. But, but well, yeah, so sometimes just one of the stories is enough. <laughs> right, yeah. Or if like, especially I feel like, especially if you're writing a certain genre, maybe you might discover that the person uses like the same types of plot devices or, you know, getting, 
a character gets out of a situation in a similar way. Because I imagine you're going to write yourself into a corner every now and then. Like you've written this character in this town so many times. Mm -hmm. And then that's when they branch off. That's when you go to like the person who comes to visit this town in this book. Then the next book series takes place in that town where there's different characters and you can use different devices. <laughs> How many times did Harry just use the Expelliarmus? Oh, I know. Yeah, and I saw on the internet the other day about... Um, <laughs> What if, they just, what if he had just like put the Wii remote, you know, the Wii remote is attached to your wrist. <laughs> Could Voldemort have just attached his wand to his wrist and then just picked it back up again? I mean, like you got to come to expect it at some point. At right? some point. It's the ones, it's the only spell he ever uses against you pretty much. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I may, I may be devoted, but I'm not unaware. My head right. is not in the sand. <laughs> We, we can critique those things that we love. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so my lights are flickering. I don't know if you can see that. I it's can. Really but it's so in Allison's world. <laughs> well, turn those off. Don't make much of a difference. Yeah. So but I was I was interested because I was like, you know, what are the words? Because we talk about trilogies a lot. And, we, and like, yeah. I discovered this word, the duology. And I was like, yeah. what other words are there? Yeah. There are lots of them. Sure are. And now you've got them all written down for reference. Right? Um, four books is a tetralogy. Okay. Five books is a pentology. Six books is a hexology. I mean, like, it follows. It, yes. It very much makes yeah. sense. So it was just like... And it goes, I found a list up to 20. I couldn't find higher than that. Okay. Um, but there are other books who call two books a pair. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, three books is still a trilogy and four books is a quartet. Mm -hmm. And then anything five and above is. a series. Yeah. And I have heard of books called quartets. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So I've, I've heard of, I've, I've seen that word used, um, yeah. but just, yeah. Most of the time when you see two books, it's like the sequel, not right. anything else. So I think like the duology term is very interesting that they're, yeah. they're trying to, I don't know. I just find well, that. And I, think a, I think a duology probably suggests that the story may not be true, but it suggests to me that the story was always meant to be in those two parts. A sequel is like, I decided to write a sequel. Um, right. Yeah. I, I decided, or I, I decided there was more to say, more to say. But for example, that use of Nightmare is Strange the Dreamer duology I read, like that was, those were just gonna be, I think those were just only gonna be the two pieces. And yeah. because it was like 700 pages long each, they always were gonna need to be two yeah. books. Um, so to me, that's what that suggests to me and whether or not that's true. But if someone were to call it a duology, I would assume that they planned it more. That um, makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. I like that. I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> right, right. Because I feel like some people... Here's by people, Allison. <laughs> right. I feel like some people probably do write books and are like, you know what? I just feel like there's more to say. You know, not yeah. like a... But they're just like, I, I want to do more. And then... Then it, yeah. So do you have any series, since we're wrapping up here, do you have any series that you like really want to like recommend? Like as a series reader, like just, do you, I don't know, do you have anything to impart? Any wisdom to impart? No, <laughs> never. Okay. Wisdom is fabulous? Yes. Wisdom, yes. no. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's really just, is going to depend on what the, the reader likes. Yeah. Um, yeah. and because, you know, they come in, they're, they're just so common, like yeah. romances, mysteries, cozy mysteries. Um, yeah. I found some of more, the more gruesome mysteries, um, those tend to be more like they build, like you yeah. need to know more of the backstory. Um, okay. yeah, but forever, I think Outlander will be something I recommend okay. to people. Nice. Even if they don't like series, just because yeah. it's time travel and adventure and love and history and yes, you know the battlefield. I mean, it's, it's yes. a little bit of everything. There's something right. for everyone. <laughs> for everybody, that does sound about right, probably for Outlander. Yeah. Um, I was my I had for my part. I was going to say thinking about 
if you're not typically a series reader, I, like I said, for me, I just kind of read authors. So that mm -hmm. kind of fulfills that. They don't have to be the same characters, but it's the same vibe. Um, but I think that one, one type of series I could probably possibly get into um, is like just, I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but like historical series, because mm -hmm. there's a very clear destination because it's some stuff that really happened. So for an yeah. example, that would be Wolf Hall, like the Wolf Hall series um, by Hilary Mantel, which I've never read. But um, <laughs> there's you, there's a very clear destination for those books. There's very clear characters. There's very, I imagine each one wraps up, the episodes wrap up and you don't need to be, like you may be curious about what happens next, but you don't have to read the book to find out because it's history. But I think that there's probably <laughs> like those character arcs that thread throughout. Like I, just, I feel like that might be the best of both worlds for someone like me who isn't necessarily drawn to visiting a place over and over or visiting with characters over and over and doesn't yeah. feel that relationship, but you could still kind of if you find somebody who tells a story that you like, that might be a good way to follow. But I don't think there are a ton of historical series, honestly, but um, that Wolf Hall was one that I thought of. I can't really think of many. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, but I did buy Wolf Hall from our uh, Friends of the Library shelf <laughs> at one point. So I do have it. Cause I was, I was thinking that I was like, it's a big book, which I do love a big book. Yeah. And uh, thought I might be able to, jump into that and um yeah so that was that was my my thoughts if you are not a series reader follow an author or maybe look into something that's more more historical or mo more loosely connected and then you don't um, feel the pressures of oh my gosh there's nine more books although if you want to get thoroughly immersed in mm -hmm. a character there are a few very very long series okay um, Stuart Wood Stone Barrington series. Yes. Book 60 comes out this year. He's got four coming out this year. I don't know how many are already out. Probably two. We're halfway through the year. Yeah. So two of them are probably already yeah. out. But um, yes, the 60th book in the Stone Barrington series comes out this year. How, do you it's, know, you probably don't, and it's fine. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but do you know like what cover like what span of time those books cover? Like does each book cover like a couple days or like is Stone Barrington like a hundred years old now or, you know? I don't know. Me um, either. I don't know either. So I did just. Well, he's, he started writing them in 1991. Well, the first one was published in 1991. Um, so in the last 30 mm -hmm. years, he solved okay. 60 cases. Okay. So maybe year. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it covers just natural amount of time. Because that's yeah. actually another answer. I know we're over time, but that's another question. If you're going to write an ongoing series like that, should your character age? You know, should your character age with time, or is your character always just going to be a 35 year old hotshot person solving crime? You know, how, or whatever. How long was Nancy Drew a. Uh, she still is. She still is. Are, she, are those still being written? I think so. Wow. Ooh, graphic novel versions anyway. Yeah. I mean, like Nancy Drew's been solving crimes for yeah. decades. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is that preferable to having your character age? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think. I think yeah. I, I like to see the passage of time and yeah. like them growing and learning, yeah. but that's just me. So I don't know. Well, at some point, Stone Barrington would have to retire, right? <laughs> and then, Maybe. then does it turn into a cozy mystery series where he just solves crimes like at his bridge club? <laughs> Who's been stealing the cookies? Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, it's just it's very interesting um, when you're writing such a long running series. And what's the other one you talked about? The in depth in depth series. I don't think there's a series for um, long. You know? JD Robs. Uh, let me see. Book 54 in that series come, she's got, I saw 54 in that wow. series. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you, before we go, one, one little thing. I hate the books 
like the little novellas yeah in between books because sometimes yeah. those are hard to find um like they will it's they use the same characters from the series yeah. and like stuff happens but it's in a novella that like unless yeah. you pick up this anthology of yes. like books you don't ever see because novellas just are out there or, or some it, sort of 99 cent ebooks right is the only yeah. way they've ever put out Yes, the 99 cent ebooks <laughs> that drove me crazy because we'd have people come in and they're like, I need this. It's the next story. I need this. And I'm like, it's only available as an ebook and it's a novella. So we didn't buy it because it's not a whole book. So we didn't spend the money on it. Um, and like the only, or or they did an Amazon exclusive ebook. Right. Yeah. We couldn't get it. It's um, not available. Yeah. I'm glad that, that authors have moved away from that trend a bit. Um, it's it still happens a little bit, but they've yeah. not as much as it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that really annoyed me. And Charlene Harris, oh ho 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 ho. One time she she did one of those novellas. Yeah. And then like the next book started off with like these characters, and you're like, what 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 is going on? Like what happened? Like I'm so mm -hmm. confused. I'm like, I missed a book. So I go back and I'm like, no, everything says that this is the next book. Yeah. What is happening? She got so much flack for that from her readers yeah. because she put like a key plot point in a novella that was separate. And she's like, I will never do it again. I promise yeah. never. Um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. don't make that mistake and don't put anything important in a novella because people will yeah. miss it. Yeah, I think so. And when they do, when they go back in time and do like a, the prequel a zero, <laughs> because they start at number one and because I've definitely put that series statement in a record before, you know, whatever, whatever series volume zero or, you know, 2.5 or whatever. Um, or when they have, uh, this happens a lot with juvenile stuff, but there's like a series within a series. It's this mm -hmm. series, sub series, this, um, and that can get a little hairy. And so we'll have in a bib record. Um, that happens like with the Doom series, doesn't it? Is it doesn't I, the Doom have sub series? Probably. I haven't done a Doom book in a very long time, maybe ever. <laughs> um, but they have, you know, so we'll have a series statement for like the overarching series, a series statement for this series, a series statement for those two together because. I don't know. Each one is meaningful in its own way. It's book three of the sub series, but in the overarching universe, it's book thirty-five or whatever. Right? Yeah. And so that just I when you're a fan, it's very easy. But when it's one of you know a hundred books on your cart, you're trying to get, trying to get through. You're, you're on on these websites like, okay, so what book is this? What book is this? And when you're when you're a reader who hasn't been following all along, and you like want to delve into that, knowing where to yeah. start, it gets very confusing. So. Yeah. I bet, yes. I bet when you're behind the reference desk trying to help somebody figure that out too, you feel yes. especially inept. <laughs> you're like, okay, well, let me take a look. Yeah, Discworld. Terry Pratchett's Discworld is a good example that has a lot of different, because there's a whole universe is yeah. how I think of it, these things, and then series within that universe. But that whole universe, you're still going to tie them together. Yeah. 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 And, and like, this universe, like these, these, this series of stories is taking the place at the same time as this series of yeah. stories, and these ones are in the future, or these ones are in the yeah, yeah, it's, it's confusing. So, it does. <laughs> I was like, it does. okay, someone just needs to tell me where to start, <laughs> right? Just point me in a direction or tell me it doesn't matter. And I, because the Discworld stuff, I'm not. I've not read a ton of it, but the Terry Pratchett that I've read, I felt like I could pick up anything and it would be fine. Like you may not know, you may not know everything that happened before or after, but the characters are quirky, you know, to expect that. And you know, to expect you just, as long as you're kind of like, you know what the Discworld universe is, at least in my experience, again, maybe I just don't care enough, but I've definitely <laughs> like the, the Terry Pratchett that I've read has all felt very accessible despite me not knowing anything else about it. So I feel like if you're good, I feel like that's the right way to do it. If you're going to write such a lit multi-dimensional thing, yeah. a lot of access points because that first book may go out of print and then where will we be? <laughs> you always need the first book though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We can end on that though. Good question. Not to put you on the spot, but something that's difficult in a library is so many series are so long. 
where how do you decide what books from the series you're going to keep? Can you get rid of some of them if they don't circulate that well, if they're everyone's least favorite book? What do you, do you have to have a complete set? And Mary, Mary orders our manga and that's, we, I have manga written down in my thing. We didn't get to it. That's something that's very series heavy. Oh, lots yeah. and lots and lots and lots and lots of books. What do you do as a library? It's, it's very hard. Um, a lot of, like, I can tell you right now, we do not have 70, we do not have 60 Stone yeah. Barrington books on the shelf. We do not. I know that for a fact. Yeah. We keep a, a good number of them. Like the last several years, I yeah. Have, yeah. But it, like with smaller series, you mm -hmm. know, seven or eight books, we try to yeah. have all of them, you know? And yeah. um, the first copy is always the one that, you know, wears out the most. So you want to have extra yeah. copies of that because people yeah. will start the series and never finish. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it gets hard. And sometimes that becomes a way of reading. Like I can't get the first series, the first book in this series again, I guess I'll get rid of the other three that we have, or yeah. this series has 12 books and we've got seven. Um, mm -hmm. I can't get them again. Mm -hmm. I guess it, it, it gets very difficult, but sometimes you can use it to your advantage because yeah. we never have enough room on our shelves. Right. Um, we're constantly buying new books, which means we constantly have to get rid of books because mm -hmm. um, unfortunately shelf space is finite. Right. Um, <laughs> so it, it, Sometimes it gives you an excuse to discard books. Right. Um, and but then it, someone who loves that series goes to the book cart or to the book store when that reopens again and is like, heck yes, I'm getting six of the seven books in this series for a few dollars and it's great. <laughs> yes, exactly. And maybe they already have book one. Who knows? Right. But, um, it, it's so hard with the really long series knowing what to keep. Um, I can tell you we do not have 54 in-death books by, by J.D. Robb on the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we have all of the newest ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's one of those after a certain period of time, you just you have to weed. You don't have room mm -hmm. for all of them. Right. Um, we probably have most of the alphabet for uh, Sue mm -hmm. Grafton's. It didn't, yeah. she didn't finish. Um, uh, so... Where she got to X? No, she, I think she got to Y. I was actually y. just talking about this yesterday with my coworker who's very knowledgeable about this, and she y. said she had got 25. <laughs> yes. I, I remember in her family, her, in her obituary, the family was like, for us, the alphabet will always end at Y. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I but, know, that's very sad to yes. so close. Yes. But, um, we probably have most of those because like that's a that's a series that people go back to and yeah. is still fairly popular. Um, yeah. And we want to have as many of those as possible. Yeah. But, yeah. There's no way we have six Stone Barringtons on the shelf. Six Stone Barringtons. If we had 50 of those, we wouldn't be, where would we put all the James Pattersons? Right? Ex exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you for explaining that. I just that that came to me. We are a library show, and we I didn't even have that in my notes about like how do you decide as a library how to keep, you know, how to grow your series and always be adding the things that people want, but to deal with limited shelf space as those series grow. And you just yeah, yeah gotta. Thankfully, things do go in and out of favor too. There's a yes. yeah. series that people really love that kind of replaces a series yes. that people aren't reading anymore. And that, I think that that is very natural. We're never gonna have enough shelf space, but like there's also sort of trends that you can use to your advantage. Yes. And just real quickly, there was a, I, I didn't write the name of it down because I was just like, I'm, there's a Japanese series that has like 171 books in it. Wow. wow. That's a whole lot of books. Yeah, that sounds like like the book version of like a soap opera. Like soap right. operas are on every day. You know, there's just hundreds and thousands of episodes that they've recorded. It's, it sounds almost like you're getting into the book version of that. Like, right, yes. Oh my that God. is one that I would not jump into. <laughs> no. So, no. Yeah. All right. Well, it's great to chat. I'm sorry we went over again. Um, <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> see ya.